Hi, Jack. Patrick Creighton. Patrick, nice uh, to meet you. I'm a film student, and I was um, curious about your facility here. You're the executive director of the Good Neighbor Center. Yes. And you are pretty much a uh, temporary shelter for families. Yes, we're an emergency shelter for families, homeless families, uh, located here in Tigard. Uh, we have room for nine families at a time. They stay uh, up to six weeks, and so we consider ourselves a safe harbor for for families uh, uh, giving people a, a chance to uh, uh, relax have you know a warm place to sleep hygiene items three squares a day uh, services we have lots of classes here and services to try to people uh, uh, help people remove barriers to housing uh, get kids stabilized in school <clears throat> things like homework club tutoring a summer school program uh, and uh, our goal is to move people into permanent housing uh, to the best of our ability to give them the tools they need to be self-sufficient in their life. So this is sort of the beginning point when they are out of luck or have troubles or it's can't right. find work. It's kind, of, uh, it's kind of the bottom, you know, when you when you're actually have no home and uh, you're doubled up with relatives, friends, um, you're in some cases, of course, extreme cases, you're, you're camping in the woods somewhere, you're living in sure. your car, uh, it's cold outside, um, and uh, you know there are three shelters. We were in part of a network of three shelters in this county, uh, and collectively, we have nine room for nine families. Collectively, there's only room for uh, 17 families, and there's always a waiting list. So, so uh, there's a lot of a lot of poverty, mm -hmm. a lot of real tough poverty out there mm -hmm. we're part of the we're part of the solution we hope to be part of the solution yeah it's, it has a good feeling to it here that's for sure yeah, yeah. well let's take a look okay so we have a, a commercial kitchen uh, with uh, walk-in refrigerators walk-in freezer uh, big pantry stocked uh, families uh, use the food in our kitchen to prepare breakfast and lunch for themselves and their, and their, and their kids. Uh, dinner every night, 365 days a year, is supplied by volunteers. People come in, their families, civic organizations like Kiwanis, uh, church groups, they come in and they use our kitchen to prepare dinner for our families. Uh, we eat communally here in the dining room. Uh, two, four, six, nine high chairs currently. So you can see the population that, uh, that we serve here. Uh, the volunteers uh, supply, um, either bring ingredients, cook from scratch, uh, or, they, or they use the food that's available here in, in our, our pantry. Um, we we uh, are blessed with uh, donations of mm -hmm. food from uh, Whole Foods, New Seasons, Costco, uh, Target, with Target it's mostly hygiene items, things like diapers and uh, toothpaste, those sorts of mm -hmm. things. Um, uh, we, we have hundreds of people who come and drop off things. Here's some bread that came yesterday. Uh, this uh, I think was from uh, New Season. So this is all uh, bread that just arrived this morning. It was in late yesterday afternoon. So we have a family room space here with uh, you can't see it but there's a big screen TV uh, people use this just to lounge and uh, and chat um, so for these these are you know pretty much 
comfortable like a living room for yeah. families and the kids and they got plenty of play toys over there. <laughs> oh, we've got lots of kids here. We've got Play-Doh. We have a whole, um, yeah, we keep it stocked with all kinds of toys for all age groups. Uh, we have an a, a educational coordinator, a, a certified teacher who works here on the other side of the building and she's got more learning tools, books and games and those sorts of things at her. You might be able to hear, a, sounds like a dryer in the background behind us. There's a laundry room with two washers and two dryers. And they're see. pretty much running all the time. <laughs> and then the residences? The resident have a, there's a wing down this way. So how, and these are, how many rooms are there? Nine rooms. Okay. So I'll just uh, show you the, the, the hallway. The, the rooms are all currently occupied. Sure. And, and uh, so we won't try to open one of those up. And, and uh, but... Uh, Nine rooms, we have uh, 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 men's and women's uh, bathrooms with showers and that sort of uh -huh. thing. The rooms, the rooms don't have their own, uh, they, don't, they don't have their own bathroom. Uh, so it is communal living, but you sleep and you have your stuff and everything in right. your own locked room for your family. And the families are all together. And the families are together. That actually is, a, is quite a problem in the Portland area. Uh, and we're one of the, uh, there are others, but there are many cases where a family needs shelter and uh, the place will only accept women and children. And so dad has to go live somewhere else. Oh, I see. Uh, so it's, it, uh, it, you know, it's, uh, we'd never believed in that model from, we've been doing this now for about 12, 13 years. And uh, it's always been a family and, and people describe their own family. It can be grandma, there was a family here, uh, just moved into housing a month ago. It was grandma and daughter, and then a three-year-old granddaughter. It's ah. a family. 